Welcome to Series 3 of Beyond the Blade. I'm Adam Child. And I'm Jesse Miano. And this season, we're going to be following the British Superbike Championship, but also playing a special visit to the Isle of Man to catch up with the TT team. Let's catch up on all the action from round one. Oh, fast life, the fast living. So there's been a few changes to the British Superbike Championship and the Superstock Championship. Can you talk us through some of the rules and regulation changes with the Superbikes? Sure, so the big change is the change to the point system. So we've had the showdown since around 2010, which is always made for a really dramatic ending, but now it's going to be even more dramatic. So the point system is changing. So throughout the three quarters of the year, it's going to be really important to be consistent and get those points. And then towards the end of the year, in the last three rounds, the amount of points you get for a win in first, second, third, fourth and so forth will increase. So this means it will be all to play for when we get to the last three rounds. Right. And why have they changed the showdown? Why have they got rid of the showdown and brought in this new point system? It's just going to make the final three rounds way, way more exciting. I mean, the showdown's a brilliant format and other series that have followed and done what BSB has done. Um, but now it's going to be even more exciting because at the final round there's going to be so many points to play for. If you use football as an analogy, if you're 8 0 down with 10 minutes to go, the team almost gives up. But a team who are way down in the points, who are like third, fourth, fifth, or maybe sixth, know that when they can get to that last round, you're just going to have to throw all the money on black or throw all the money on red and just go big. So there's been a few changes with Superstock as well then. The tyres? Yeah, so traditionally Superstock have run on treaded road legal tyres, so you can see tread. Yeah. Superbikes have run on slicks. For this year, Superstock and Superbike are both going to run on slicks, so it means a bigger contact patch. Right. If you use the analogy of like you're really good at climbing, yeah. Slick tyres is four fingers with loads of chalk, you've got loads of grip. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nice super groovy. stock is three fingers, no, no chalk. chalk. <laughs> so it then helps the younger riders get used to slick tyres early exactly. on. Exactly, yeah. So now super stock riders will be used to slick tyres and the sizes, but then when they jump to Superbike, that jump will be a lot easier and a lot simpler. So in theory, young riders like Franco Bourne, when he goes to Superbike, it'll be the same size front tyre, same size rear tyre, very similar compound, and he should be able to make that jump. Have it's round one, BSB, perfect conditions, and this year on the back of Superstock success, you've got so many bikes in this class. And remember, back in 2000, was it 19 and 20, we had one or two bikes. How has it grown so big so quickly? I think, Chad, you know that that was always the, the dream, if you like, with the new model Fireblade that we have presently now, the Triple RSP, coming into 20, 21, 22, two Superstock championships, second in the Superstock championship. And for sure, the bike's a fantastic bike. And it's great to see so many riders and teams that have morphed over yep. to the Honda back to what it was 15, 16 years ago. So how many bikes have we actually got and how many are you supporting? Because obviously we've got Nathan and John in the official team. But when you look down the list, there's a huge amount of fireplanes in this class now. I think there's 17 full-time entries in Superstar. 17? I think, and I think there's another five wildcard entries as well. And then there's eight riders in Superbike. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing the rating because obviously the super stocks are now on slicks, similar to the super bikes, so the times are going to be close. Yeah. And with so many riders on Hondas, it's going to be such great racing this year. Yeah, for sure, Chad. You know, like I said, the, the tyre side, I mean, that's a fantastic move for the guys on super stock. Same size tyres, albeit yeah. different in compounds, but yeah. same size, which is the big thing. And like I say, I think you're going to see some incredible times this year in super stock. Cool. Thanks for your time, mate. Thanks, Chad. Looking Thank you. To round one. Thank you, mate. Andrew, we're hiding from the rain here at Silverstone, back in the Honda truck. How does it feel to be back wearing a Honda jumper in the Honda truck? As soon as I came back from, uh, from signing the contract with Harv, you know, I had a smile on my face. I knew that I was coming back to a bike that's competitive. I was coming to a team that's definitely competitive. You know, they showed that last year in 2022. I've been competitive in this bike before in 2020. And yeah, uh, yeah I feel good. I feel really good to be back again. And uh, it just brings a smile to my face. And what's your expectations of the bike? Because obviously the bike performed really well in your brother's hands towards the end of last season and throughout the season. What's your expectations? How has it been? 
As soon as I read it in testing, I knew that it had took a step from my last Reddit. And but what I would say is that I've uh, been craving the DNA of the Honda of the Fireblades, and that's what yeah. I craved the past two years that I was I was away, and that's why I was always trying to get that feeling. As soon as we rolled out in Monte Blanco, I got that feeling again, and it's like, uh, yeah, this is what I wanted, this is what I've missed. So it, we have that DNA, but we've we've also improved the package from I was last year, and I think from 2022 to now, I've ridden the 2022 bike and I've ridden the 23 bike. I backed the back them a little bit during testing in Spain, especially in the last days in Navarra. And I believe the 23 bike is a better package. Cool, man. I'm looking forward to seeing you on the podium with little Ezra up on the podium with you. That'd be cool. That's a dream, especially at the end of the year. <laughs> Cheers, mate. So we're at a glorious Silverstone first round BSB. We're here with Tom. Tom, you missed a glorious, perfect weather practice at Silverstone. Oh, no, no, it was heavy rain, that was right. I know, it made me feel a lot better about the situation. It's no secret that I broke my collarbone out in Spain, so I was ruled out for the Spanish test and the UK test. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as a racer, you're always thinking, oh, I'm bloody hell, I'm missing out on all this riding. But I yeah, went to yeah, Donington yeah. to watch anyway, and driving down to Donington, it was, it was nice sunshine. And I was getting really agitated, got to Donington, the heavens opened, and I was just sat there thinking, <laughs> yeah. oh, oh never mind. no one's getting a leg up on me now. So, I mean, it's unfortunate for all the other riders and for Andrew and everyone, but yeah, for, yeah. for my situation, it worked out quite well, to be fair. So, yeah, I've given my collarbone enough time to be healed enough to, yep. to be riding, and we're back on the up again. So, yeah, it's good to be here. And do you have to change anything? Obviously, it's a, it's a really hectic lap round here. You don't get any chance to rest. Yeah. It's quite a long race. Do you have to pace yourself, or are you just going to go yeah, flat it, out? It's a, it's a track where we, we're, we're given a special tyre from Pirelli because you'll just wear the right-hand side of the road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a really smooth, nice track, but it does eat tyres. So there is definitely a bit of tyre conservation involved. At the minute, everyone's just going hell for leather, trying to get some one-lap pacing ready for qualifying. But yeah, it's, again, coming here for round one off, off the back of the injury I've had, it's good for me because it's nice and smooth, no undulations. Yeah, yeah, it's a good one to be. It's not the most physically challenging track to ride, so it's, it's played into my advantage and I think we'll be okay come, come the races, so it should be all right. Cool, mate. It's good to catch up eventually. You missed the rain. Yeah. Good looking qualifying. Thank you very much. Cheers. At selective rounds of BSB, Honda will have their ride-free activation where anyone without a license can simply ride a motorcycle for the very first time. Honda will provide everything you need, crash helmet, jacket and qualified instructors. Head over to their website, hondaridefreeexperience.co.uk for more details. Nathan, John, we're hiding away from the rain, Silverstone BSB test. John, last year, brilliant season for you, and it must be a bit of pressure off now you've got those 100 starts out of the way. How are you feeling going into 23? Yeah, feeling a little bit, probably a little bit better, less under pressure if you like. There was a lot of things last year that, that got on top of me a bit really, to be fair. The, uh, you know, I wasn't really concentrating on the riding, we were concentrating on gold bikes and yeah, 100th yeah. anniversary, 50 year old, MBE, new teeth, you know, there's tons of stuff going on that was, like I say, I think it was honest result last year, I think what we achieved was great, we finished all the races on the Honda, the bikes never missed a beat, I really enjoyed it, and this year, it's, I'm just going to put my Honda leathers on, I'm going to ride the bike, I've gone, a little bit down the order in starting and gone for number three. So, you know, number one's yeah, hard. Yeah. When you stood there, you know, the number one factory on the rider away, <laughs> that was a bit intense for me. So this year we'll go number three. So hopefully we'll just sneak under the radar, but not, not, not that I don't want to be good. I, mean, I really want to be, I think last year we, we could have been better. Yeah. And that was me, not the team and the bike. It was definitely me. I just wasn't, my pencil wasn't as sharp, but this year we've, we're definitely yeah. a better place, you know? And now, obviously last year you was on the Honda Fireblade, you're still on the Honda Fireblade, but everything else has completely changed. How does it feel to go from running your own bike to stepping into the big boys? Yeah, well it's an opportunity of a lifetime for me really, um, to get like my, a call up to the factory Honda team with John McGuinness as your teammate. Obviously I grew up wanting to be John McGuinness, so now to be with him and hopefully like learn a thing or two from him, um, hopefully it'll be, it'll be good. And what have you found is the, the biggest difference going from running your own bike to the team? Is it the amount of people? Is Does the bike feel different? Or what's the biggest thing that you went, I wasn't expecting that? It's getting, it's the hardest thing I'm trying to adjust to is getting used to doing nothing, if you know what I mean. In, in, the, in the terms of getting off my bike and I'm literally just, everyone like swarms in, if you know what I'm used to like getting the stand on with my dad and then throwing the tire warmers on and then talking and then making suspension changes and stuff like that. Whereas like now it's you get off and then you're like, what's your problem? And then you just sit down and tell them and then everyone does it for you. Hopefully that, that now will take me to the next level again in, in my early days of a career. 
Well, hopefully it'll dry out later on this afternoon. Hopefully you can get out. You can get your levers on, Chad. I don't think you'll fit in mine, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're looking all trim and slim now. <laughs> I'm trying, trying. We've got a deal on, well, that's a separate deal with Honda, so... It's a separate deal. We'll keep quiet about that till we pull the deal off. Cool. <laughs> all right, well, looking forward to seeing you out later on, and we'll catch up throughout the season. Cheers. the end of round one here at Silverstone, considering you didn't have much practice due to injuries, it doesn't seem to have inhibited you in any way? No, it's been good to be fair, I, I can't really use that as an excuse. I've had a really good weekend to be fair, my one lap pace hasn't been great, qualifying it wasn't too good, but we managed to move forward in all my races, yep. point scoring finishes, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's unfortunate what happened yesterday, but again I was in the point scoring position, so from where I was a month ago, and it really I shouldn't have even been here, yeah. I've been a bit naughty and gone against the doctor's advice, he said six weeks for a collarbone, it's only been four, my objective was to stay safe, get some points, wherever them points were, just, just stay on the bike, and uh, that's what we've done this weekend, so Credit to the team and, and everyone else, and yeah, it's good to be back and look forward to Alton round two now. Andrew, we started off the race weekend with a massive crash that you fortunately walked away from, and from then on, you've just progressed, progressed, and progressed, and progressed. How's it been? Yeah, it's a, a frustrating weekend, I would say. Happy too. We made a big step, actually, for the first five minutes, and then I totaled the bike. You didn't, never want to crash at a yeah. 165 mile an hour or something, and uh, yeah, I was lucky to walk away from it. Yeah, I'm lucky to wear the best for sure, and then easy, and uh, yeah, it was unfortunate. But it was definitely my fault, and uh, you know, the team done a mega job to rebuild me the bike, and uh, we went out at P3, and I went quite fast straight away, but I just lacked the ability to push that a little bit extra, I think, and yep. that made it difficult for qualifying. Uh, I qualified 14th, and around here you need to qualify. And yeah, yeah. The first race, I think I came eighth, second race, I came ninth. Uh, the third race was a big step, you know, we were in that front group, but I feel like we made a step and you know what, we're uh, three races down, 30 to go, hopefully this is our bad luck out of the way and uh, let's just keep keep working hard, the boys can go back to life, see how we can improve and yeah, I have every faith in them and uh, I hope they have every faith in me, so let's try to, to start building from now. Sweet, thanks for your time mate, good luck at all. Thanks very much, cheers, cheers. thank you. So that's it from round one here at Silverstone BSB. The guys are all packing up and it's been a perfect weather, perfect conditions. The fans have loved it. In Superstock, it's been a 123 Honda and a 123 Honda. In Superbike, the guys have been chipping away. Erwin had a massive crash in practice and he's come back and got faster and faster. And Tom's proved consistent pace, is getting over his injuries, and we're looking forward to the next round. But before you go, it's competition time. Do you want to be in with a chance of winning a money can't buy experience and having a day with Honda Hospitality and watching race one from the garage? Well, all you've got to do is go to your local Honda dealership, get a picture of yourself with the new Fireblade, upload it to your social medias don't forget to tag honda uk and the dealership that you're in with the answer to this question now the question is a tricky one when did the honda fireblade first compete in the british superbike championship so you've got to be over 18 to enter and the winner will be notified via their social media profile thanks for joining us at round one and we're looking forward to keeping you updated throughout the season <laughs>